Hi guys, on this tutorial I'm going to show you to make this really cute little vintage teddy bear cake. Okay, so as you can see we're doing lots of different things in this tutorial. We're going to be carving it a cake, we're going to be ganashing it, uh, covering it in an un uh, unusual shape with a sugar paste, also the, the cool buttercream piping with the, the, the fur, airbrushing to get this really cool colour and tones, and of course making these really cool little flowers for the little hat. So come on, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started making this cake. So the first thing we want to do is we want to cut our little template. Now this template will be uh, in your course notes somewhere uh, down below the screen here. Okay, so uh, print off your template. Now this should be the right size. Uh, and then all we want to do is uh, just get the scissors and just go round. Now once you've got these cut out, uh, if you've got a laminator in the house, uh, just laminate them and then you can pop them in your little folder for templates. Now I should do this because I've made quite a few of these teddy bears uh, and I was end up having to print off another sheet which is a waste of paper. And the good thing about laminating is of course if you've got an oily cake like which I do, uh, it's, it, just, it just wipes off. Okay, there's the feet. So also we will need one of each. And then we've got our little feet there. Okay. I think when we had the cake shop, um, we had about 500 different templates for this because we kept on, we didn't have a laminator and then we just keep on redrawing it freehand. So, uh, oops. Uh, hopefully this one is the, the right one. No, it is. I've used it plenty of times before in the past. So just all the way around. There we go. There we go. So there we are. So we've got a nice wee template. Okay, and then, then what we want to do is we want to get our cake. So I've got a nice big chocolate cake here, as just for a wee change. Release the chocolate. So this, has been a, this is a frozen cake, so I just freeze it in the bag and then just I brought it out last night. So it's just perfect. So I'm just going to flip it upside down. It doesn't need trims from the top because it's uh, it's quite flat. And I just want to cut the cake in half. So just go round and just mark your halfway point. Okay, and then just through we go. Perfect. There. We are. Okay. Out, place that there. Okay, so just starting. Now this is the deeper side, so I always think the bottom should be on the deeper side. Now, actually, um, just watch. The, it's a wee bit rounded there, um, so what I might do is actually turn it around that way. So it's so just so it's got a flat, flat bum. Okay, and then just pop your knife on there. I'm um, just cutting round. Okay, so we'll need one, one of the bums, or one of the bottoms. Just forgot to do the middle bit there. It's just cut. Okay, there's the first little Scooby snack. Okay, so that's fine. So that's just got the the bum, and then we've got the body. So just see if we can get that out of there, we can, so that's perfect. So it's a bit of a jigsaw, just trying to work out where you can fit these out. Okay. So we'll see if we can get two bodies. So I've been cut off, yep. And just you can just place it on the on there just now. And if we just cut another one out from here. If 
you feel like you're running out of cake, what you can do is you can cut this in half and get half and use half for the body and half for the head. Okay, there we go. Right, and then now we want to cut out the head. Okay, so just around. So you can see I'm just up and down like a little saw. Okay, so there's one head. Don't worry if it doesn't fit in exactly, because you know once it ganashed, it get, it'll, it'll all be hidden. There we go. You can see that's a bit wobbly, so you can just flip it over, and there we go, look, balances out. And then I'm going to get a wee head from here. So this one's a bit smaller, but of course it's going to be carved anyway. So there's our head. And uh, you can see we've got all this cake left. Look at all this extra cake. Okay, so all we've got to do is get the, the feet cut out. Okay, just place that on there. Cut it down. Go, and then I can just... I actually made it a little bit bigger. Okay, and then we want to do the same with this bit here. Now, that one's a bit slightly got a bit of a curve on it, where this one's nice and straight. So I'm going to use this bit. And then the same thing, I'm just going to cut it a little bit bigger. There we are. Okay, so there we are. So you can see there, we've not got much cake left. Um, so uh, if you wanted to, you could cut a little bit and put a little bit more into the body. If you look there, I'm happy with the size of this one, but if you sort of cut down there, pop that there, yeah, you could actually get another little bit of a body because that's going to get carved down. But I think it might make it a little bit too tall. Um, so that's just a wee Scooby snack. All right, so if we just uh, get rid of the, the cake, just push all over here. Okay, and then we get our ganache. Now it's a wee bit cold in here. I don't know if this is going to have set. Yeah, it's a wee bit on this set side. Two seconds. So I just pop it in the microwave. So I'm just going to put that in for 16 uh, seconds, and so while it's in the, the, the microwave, I'm going to move these over, and we've got our, our board here, so I've got a temporary board just for uh, icing the cake and doing the ganache. The card it's going to sit on, and then we're going to have a 12 inch round cake drum that will get iced separately and we'll transfer it over. Okay. So it's almost, it's still a wee bit on the stiff side. So I'm going to pop it back in for a couple of seconds. Okay. Let's pop that over there. Do a little bit of housekeeping and get rid of these templates anymore. I should have got them laminated again. Okay, pop these over here. Right, that should be good. Oh, perfect. Now this ganache was actually some leftover ganache from a, a class I had, so it's actually 50-50, half milk and half dark chocolate in there. Right. So what I want to do is first of all get this. And we want to cut his little foot. I know it seems bad. So I'm going to cut the little foot off, his little leg, around there. And I actually want to bring it further round so that so his legs are open a little bit, which means this you can just move this cake around a wee bit. Okay, so just around there. Now at the back, it just makes it a little bit out of sync. So I just go round and just give the back a wee trim. There we are. Okay. Now what we can do is we can just trim off 
the legs a little bit just to make it a little bit more rounded. Oops, that was a bit much, but the ganache will fix that. <laughs> there we go. And then what we want to do is uh, this card here, transfer it onto this card. Okay, so if we just lift the cake over and place it onto the card. Now we need to leave a wee bit of space for his wee, his wee tootsies, his wee feet. So I'm just going to cut, uh, draw a little line just to give a bit extra space for his feet. And then of course we want to go all the way around the back. This just really helps to transfer it over to the board. Okay, and just get your scissors. And just cut that. Obviously, if you can, try and cut with a pencil. You can cut away so it's not on the card. Alright. Alright, so now it's time to get the ganache. The ganache. Let's say it very posh. The ganache. Okay, so one gets one's ganache and one wants to stick one's butt to the board. Okay, so on there. Okay, and it's just like a sort of jigsaw, isn't it? We've just got to sort of try and muddle our way to the uh, to the top. So um, every time we add a separate part, you want to put some ganache on just to, to mould stick it together okay so um, now we're going to just move up now of course you could put Bailey's in here if you wanted a wee a wee Bailey's cake or um, if you're doing a Madeira cake then just put your your layers of jam and buttercream or, or jam and white chocolate actually is much nicer okay so pop that on there and then we've got another body Okay, and then we just want to pop that one on. Now I need to trim this one, I just remembered I never trimmed this one. Just remember I had to cut some extra off the back just to blend in, so I'm just going to trim that off there. Nice. Okay, so once we've got that shape there, give it a wee press down, all I want to do is just take the, the top off and you just want to kind of give it a slightly domed effect and just cut that all the way around. It's all it takes. Alright. And then once you've done that, just make sure he's got a nice press down. And uh, what we want to do now is before we put anything else on, make your life nice and easy. You may as well ganache this just now before we add the head on. And what that does is it starts to set uh, the ganache and it makes the cake stronger for when we're working on the head. Okay, so just back and forward. Right. Now, as this is a kind of this little combo, so it's half dark and half milk, so it might take a wee bit longer to set. So it takes longer, just you can pop it in the fridge. If this is a white chocolate one, you definitely need to do ganache as you go because uh, if this is white chocolate as soon as I've got this ganache on you just pop it in the fridge. Now while it's in the fridge you could actually just carve the head and start ganaching that. So you've always got something to do. Okay and then once we've got that done I just want to give his little uh, legs some chocolate. Oh got a lot of chocolate on the front there. There we go. It's actually we're having a very cold day outside today, so well, it's not as cold as it was, but 
uh, I could probably put this cake outside on the the garden table and within minutes it would probably rock solid. Okay, so there we are, that looks good. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just gonna, you can either put it in the fridge or I'm just going to pop that out of the way and bring the head over. So while I'm working on this head, that'll be setting hopefully. I think there's enough chill in the air in here uh, that I'd have to put in the fridge. Okay, so again, just popping that on. And the next one. Slap that on, look at that beautiful head. Okay, and then just get your knife. Okay, and all we want to now is just carving round to get a nice rounded head. Okay. And then down, and then just round and sort of underneath. Give it a little massage. Okay. Scooby snacks. Oh dear, what a mess. Right. Okay, bring the head back over. Big dollop on top. And then we just want to place the head on. Now I'm going to grab a dowel, which I forgot to get out. Keep picking up one that's too small. There we go. Right. So I just want to pop that in the head. Okay, and then just get your straw. Bring it up at about an inch. Cut. And then push that in. Then I'm actually going to put another one in. It just feels a bit wobbly. And I don't want to take any, any chances. So I'm actually going to put two in. I'm going to put one here. And I'll put a third one in there. Uh, I'm actually taking this cake down to Newcastle. Going down for a wee, wee party. So I thought I would surprise him with a cake. Even though it's actually, I shouldn't tell you this, but it's actually December. <laughs> We're filming this. So I feel like I should be doing a Christmas cake. Right, okay, so I just check and that feels good. Feels quite secure on there. Okay, and then the same thing again. Uh, we just want to then coat it in all this beautiful ganache. Look at that. Turn it around. And then just keep on, keep on ganaching. It's a hard job, but somebody's got to do it. A wee teddy bear with a wee hat, he's got a wee, like, a wee hoodie on. Turn it around there, like he's got a wee chocolate hoodie on. <laughs> okay. Right, it's time to take the hoodie away. There we go. Okay. So just try and watch and not lose too much of the shape. So I'm just going round and I'm just drawing the pilot knife up the way over the head just so I'm seeing that shape. Okay, so just like that. Okay, so just down there and then up from his neck. Okay. And I can always go back around and just fix the ganache if I've lost some round the side there. Now when we used to, when I first used to make these cakes, we 
it was all buttercream, including the body. Um, and see the amount of times it used to, the head would fall off. The customer would come and collect the cake, and customers aren't the, the um, what they call, what's the word? They're not very careful, and of course they would just be carrying it sideways and the head would just fall off. So once you go over to the ganache, it makes life much easier. Now, one of the legs is really far out and the other one's not. It's just a bit odd, so I'm actually going to cut that off because it's too long. And then I just pop that there. Now, I've got a slight problem is I've got the card, which is going to be too long. So I'm just try and trim that card that I cut. Just put that. Oh, there we go. There we are. All right, oh, more Scooby snacks. Right, okay, so then all that's left to do is his little feet. Oh, move that. Okay, so his little foot's gone there and there. So we've got to have a wee look. And I actually quite like it just going straight up and down like that. So all we need to do is get a clean knife <laughs> and just give him a little toe. Okay, so just that's all it takes. And, uh, just pop the ganache, it's probably easier to put the ganache on here when it's lying on its side. Okay, and then some underneath actually as well. Okay, and then the same on that one. I've just been thinking of a story. It's quite quite funny. We've got a friend that used to live in Ibiza. I don't know if it, I've just been reading a story on Line at Sunday. I was away to see Pete Tong in concert last night, and uh, this friend lived in Ibiza, and she was every day she walks her dog along the beach, and uh, she lived in Ibiza, but she hadn't really she wasn't she hadn't really been to all the big clubs, and uh, this she had friends tra travelled over to Ibiza. And they wanted to go to one of the big nightclubs in Ibiza. So uh, they went to this nightclub and it was like, I can't remember if it was Pete Tong or if it was, it was one of the big names like Calvin Harris or anyway, who, who actually lived there most of the year, obviously, because that's where they most of the work. And it wasn't until um, she saw the who at this. So this person she'd been saying morning to, walking to his dog, she had no idea who it was until she saw on stage and it was actually like the Pete Tong <laughs> or Calvin Harris. Uh, in the beach, and uh, she had no idea who it was, uh, so it's quite cool. So just acting normal with him. He was his big celebrity. Okay. Okay, so this bit's a wee bit tricky because what's actually happening here is the ganache is starting to set, so it's going to be a wee bit hard, and I should just be strong and put it in the back in the microwave, but I'm being determined to get it on. <laughs> right, okay, so I'm going to stop there. I've got enough ganache on, so what I need to do now is get the hot water. Oh, <laughs> right, okay. Okay, so what I want to do now is just get the hot water and I want to go round and just use that hot water just to smooth it off. Now I always say this to students if they're making this cake is it doesn't actually need to be perfect because it's going to have three layers. You've got ganache and then we're going to put some sugar paste on it and then as if that wasn't enough sugar we're then going to cover it in buttercream to pipe the fur on. There we go. Now, it's funny filming this because I actually filmed a very similar tutorial. It was actually one of the first tutorials I ever filmed about five years ago. <laughs> and this is the se only second time I've actually, this is the only other time I've actually fully made one of these. There we go. Now, there's a wee bit of ganache just could do on that foot. There we go, just to give it a bit extra strength. There we are. 
Now, if you don't mind getting your hands dirty, you could just get your hands in the water uh, and just go around and actually just massage it with your hands. There, yeah, I'm actually happy with it the way it is. I think that looks good. Right, I'm just going to turn it around so I can, it's facing me, so I can see them, just check it out. Okay, they feel like pretty the same size, so that's good. Just pouring it up a wee bit. That's fine. Okay, so it looks a bit of a dog's dinner, um, but don't worry. So I'm going to clean the whole place up. You can see here, it looks a bit rough, rough and ready. Uh, so give it a wee, a wee clean up, get rid of all the ganache, and clean up the board, and then we come back, we're going to cover it in sugar paste. So I'll be back in a wee jiffy. Right, so now what we're going to move on to is icing the cake. So this bit can be a wee bit tricky, uh, but don't worry, remember what I was saying, no one's going to see this layer either, because it's going to be hidden with sugar paste, so, uh, sorry, with buttercream. So uh, we just, we can chuck it on, it can be quite rough and ready, as long as it's a wee bit smooth. Now, off camera, I actually just got my hand dipped in some water, uh, and I just smoothed some of the, some of the bigger lumps of the ganache away from the, the body of the chocolate, of the, the teddy bear there, so just to make it a wee bit smoother. Okay, so we'll just get some more ice and sugar. So I've just got this very soft sugar paste. Uh, they, call it, they call it covering paste. And it's from Renshaw's. And it's just a nice, soft and squidgy sugar paste. Which is absolutely perfect for this type of cake decorating. Okay, so I'll roll it out. Now all we're looking for here is a thin skin for the buttercream to stick onto. I have saw people do it in the past where they don't put the sugar paste on and they just the buttercream the cake not ganache it refrigerate it so it goes hard and then pipe buttercream on top of the buttercream and of course these cakes are quite high risk to collapsing because there's no structure okay. so you can see how thin that is really thin there now any excess here would have some chocolate on it, it doesn't matter, just keep it because we're going to use that to make the arms and, uh, and the ears and they'll be covered in buttercream as well, so it doesn't matter if there's chocolate on them. Okay, so I just flip this all the way over, I'm going to bring Teddy over, okay, and I'm going to lift him up, the sugar paste, and we're going to just drape it right over and down, and there we go, and that's him finished, so we've got a wee ghost, just put the wee eyes on. And there we go, <laughs> nice wee Halloween cake. There we go, okay. So all we want to do now is just go round and where possible, we'll just try to start smoothing the sugar paste uh, inside, okay. Okay, and then just lifting up here and tucking that sugar paste down, okay. Now, what happens, it starts to just get a little bit silly. And you think, well, what's the point of trying that? So just create a pleat um, that we can just cut away. So I've got a big cut on my finger. And uh, the waterproof ones keep sliding off. Plasters. So I've just got a fabric one on, which doesn't look that nice. Okay. Good. So you can see here, I need to lift this up and pop it inside just so that it flattens down. Okay, and just push that down. There you can see I'm going to get a big fold round here. So I'm just going to cut it away. Get my scissors. Okay, and I'll just get the, knife, the scissors and I want to cut this whole section away here. So let's get the scissors and then just cut all the way down. There we go. Okay, now you can see I've still got a wee bit left there, so I'm just going to get my knife and just go down, trim that away, there we go. We can just pinch that together, there we go. And you can literally do that all the way around, so I've got it here as well. Okay, if we get it close enough, we can just use the knife. Okay, and just press. 
There we go. I've got one around here. Okay, good. Okay, that's it. So I'm just going round, just giving it a wee pat down. I think it's all pretty much down. Yep. Okay, so just get your smoother and just go round with the smoother. And we just want to just get in between his legs and just push that sugar paste down. Get the knife. I just want to go round and just cut away the excess. Careful in there with that knife. There we go, back round. Okay, and around there. Okay, just take away the excess. Okay. Right, so you can just go around if you want and just give it a wee dab with your smoother. There we are. A little head, a little massage. There we go, so that's him all iced. So I'm just going to scrunch this all up, mix it through. Uh, and then when we come back, uh, we're going to ice the, the baseboard and then we can actually transfer him over onto the, the, the nicely iced baseboard uh, where we can then start to add more of the details like the arms and the ears uh, and etc. before we start to get the buttercream out. So I'll be back in a wee jiffy. Okay, so now it's time to ice the board and get the ribbon on. So I've just got a little bit of water. Uh, I'm just going to wiggle that water around the board, like so, there we are, and uh, I thought we'd go for a nice lilac colour, since li lilac and purples are the one of the end colours for 2018, so I thought I would, since we saw that trend today, I thought we'd just go down the li lilac purple route. But I do apologise, I think one of my neighbours even though it's snowing today, it's doing some gardening work. So we've got some noises. He likes to cut his grass all the time. But surely he's not cutting his grass today. Okay, so just lift that up. There. Yeah. You can always use your smoother just to make sure it's definitely squished down. And you just get a clean knife and you just want to go across the edge and just pull that around. You can see there, just like butter, it just goes round. There we are. Okay. suction there. Okay, just give it a wee smoothie. And then I've got this really nice little funky polka dot ribbon. So uh, actually I'm going to pop this on a turntable. So just pop it up there. So get your glue stick. This one's a bit to run out but it should just be enough I hope. All the way around. I should take it off the turntable now. And it's much easier to put it on the table because you get a nice flush edge. Okay. There we go. Oh, I don't like this plaster, I do apologise. Gives me the heebie jeebies. I'm hoping the cameraman's not picking up on it. There we go. 
Right. It was actually one of these little orange knives that I cut myself. I've been using them for years. It's the first time I've properly cut myself with one. Actually, I say years, about 15 years. Right. Okay, so I'm just bringing the sugar paste to the edge, to the top of the ribbon. There we go. Now, of course, we are airbrushing this cake, so there will be grey tones on this, but we've just got a nice lilac base, so that's the main thing. Right, okay, so here comes the, the fun part. We're now going to transfer... <laughs> I was going to say Humpty Dumpty there. <laughs> We're going to transfer Humpty Dumpty onto the board. Right, so... The leg that's broken, I always put the palette knife underneath the leg, the broken leg. Okay, underneath there. Just give it a wee click over. Pop it on. There we go, and that's actually pretty even, just like that. There we go. Okay, just move that out of the way. Give your hands a wee wash. Ouch. Right, okay. Now what we can do is we can put the arms, the arms on next. So one of the arms is going to go down and sort of round, sort of sat there. Another one's just going straight down. Okay. Okay, so quite chunky. And you want to come round to a kind of stump. That looks way too big, but let's just see. Huge. So just cut. What is going on next door? I need to get a red light. Do you know these when you're filming live and there's a bit I have to get one above the studio so all the neighbours can see it. I think that'll that'll really annoy them. <laughs> that'll make them want to make more noise. <laughs> okay, that looks nice and chunky. And then so the other side. Just gonna just cut that there. Then you see there's bits of chocolate and stuff, it doesn't matter, remember. It's all gonna be hidden. Okay, and we want this one to kinda of come round and it's gonna sit there. Like that. There we go. Alright. Oh look at that. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, and now we want to make the ears. Now, we, we, put, we might not actually see the two ears, but we'll just put them on. We might just see the one ear, but if we put two on, I mean, we can always take one off, it's better to do that way. Because you, you, you don't know which side you, you might use, so. Okay, so just push down. This has actually been filmed live, so of course, uh, you can actually see the, the end picture, which I don't know what it looks like yet, because, oops, I've not seen it yet, so... You'll know which one you can leave on and which one you can leave off. Okay, and again, don't worry, how they look, don't worry if you've got lots of fingerprints, because, of course, it's going to be hidden. There we are. Yep, that looks good. Happy with that. Okay, so now what we want to do is we have the muzzle to do. Oops. And the tootsies. So I'm going to have a quick tidy up and then we come back. We're going to put on the little pads and then we're going to put on the muzzle and then we're going to put the tail on. And then I think we're just about ready to start airbrushing. Yep, so, uh, oh no. <laughs> then we're going to start piping and then airbrushing. Air 
Okay, so now we're going to add on the, the muzzle and the paws and the tail. So uh, for the muzzle, now I've, al I've already put a little bit of water on there just to make it grow a wee bit soft, uh, sticky. Uh, we want to get our paste wrote into a ball. This is just grey sugar paste, obviously. Okay, and roll it into a dome shape. Like that, okay? Once you get that dome shape, you want to cut off the back. Okay, and you see a nice big oval shape like that, okay? Yep, okay, so and what we want to then do is stick it onto the head, okay? So hopefully, when we go up here, you can just go across to the head and we can just weld that on there. Now you can see it's just sliding a wee bit. So I'm going to grab a cocktail stick. Oh, they're all gone. Oh, here we go. Okay. Just going to pull that up a wee bit further. Now where his nose is going to be, it's right on the end there. We can pop a cocktail stick in there which hopefully will just help to keep it aligned. Just going to check to make sure it just looks a wee bit squinty. There we are, like that. Okay, and if we just get one of our wee PME tools, you can use the Dresden or you can use the quilting the quilting tool. And um, from the nose we want to we want to mark a little line down. Like so. And then we want to do a big smile. Okay. Now if you just try and dig in a little bit further, you can actually use your knife. What we want to do is just try and pull that out a wee bit. Okay, so I'm just trying to get a nice big smile. There we go. I'm going back and forward and just try to smooth off the inside. It looks much better. Okay. And then once you get that, I just go around and just push in the side. Oh, look at that. He's got a nice wee smile. Oh, he's such a happy little bear. Okay. Here we are. Okay, so he's got a wee smile on. Uh, and then what we want to then do. I just roll out the, the grey. Okay, now what we want to do here is cut out these two pads. And I've put water on there already actually, so that it can just go straight on. And what I thought would be really nice is to give them wee toes, wee toenails sort of thing, wee pads at the top. Now, I've not got a ring cutter, so we'll just make them. Okay, so roll a sausage. Now, how many was it? Is it one, two, three, is it a dog's got four, so it'd be the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so eight, yep. So we ball. Let's just see. Is that too big? I think that's fine. So make them all the same size. 
I think three actually is probably more nicer actually than four. So let's go for three. Okay. And then a little bit of water. Just this is just water. You can use glue if you want. And then just over there. So we're making a little polar bear actually, doesn't it? Okay, and then just press them on. There you go. There we go. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, nice big pads. Nice big chunky pads. Nice. And then round the back, we can't forget his tail. You can't forget a teddy bear's tail. Sorry, you got wet on it. So a little ball. And then just pop that on the end there. Like that, he's got his wee tail. Look at that. Oh, good boy. Right. Okay, so I just get a wee ball tool. And I just want to mark out where his eyes are going to go. So just roughly there and there. Okay, there we are. Now I think everything's now in place for piping. Yep, that's it all on. So now it's operation pipe. So I'm going to make some buttercream up. Now the buttercream is just 500 grams of um, unsalted butter. Some people use salted, your choice. 500 grams uh, at room temperature. Chop it up, pop it in your mixer. And then one kg of uh, sieved icing sugar. Uh, now I just put the mixer, the butter on first on low speed with the beater, uh, soften it up, um, and then once you soften it up, just slowly keep on adding your ice and sugar until it's all mixed up. And at the very end, if you want to add a little bit of flavouring, you can put a little bit of vanilla in or lemon or whatever, the, whatever kind of flavour, whatever essence you want to add in there. I'll just put some vanilla in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pipe it on. Uh, and then of course we're going to do it just all in just a natural colour and then we're going to go around and just give it little highlights with the airbrush. Alright, so I'll be back in a jiffy with a piping bag with a number 6 star nozzle from PME uh, and we're going to start piping, so I'll be back in a wee jiffy. Bye! Okay, so now we're going to move on to piping the buttercream. So I've got some buttercream in the piping bag already, I've got a number 6 PME nozzle on the end and uh, the buttercream is just a simple buttercream with just unsalted butter and ice, ice and sugar. So, um, so I've got in here 500 grams of butter and 1 kg of ice and sugar. Now I've got double that in there because uh, I, was, I thought I was going to be making something else to be a bigger, a bigger uh, cake. So I've got too much in there. Okay, so there we go. Right, so what we want to do is just fill your bag. Now I like to use the big piping bag, this one seems tiny. Um, but anyway, so the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we get into the middle there. Now I'm going to have to use the whole thing again here. Is that going to work? No, it's not going to work. Right. Okay, so we want to try and squeeze into the, the middle here. And we want to, these legs are quite long, but they're not normally as long as this. And we're trying to, to pipe. And you can see they're getting that wee bit in there like that. Okay, so just... This is, the, this is the trickiest part. Now when you're piping, it's obviously you're looking for that spike. So there's a bit of food bag clip on the end of the piping bag, so they'll have to hold it like this. But it's such a small piping bag, I'm going to be filling it quite quickly. And the idea is you try and get them as close together so as no, we can't see the underneath. But because we're going to be airbrushing, uh, we can almost get away with not putting on as close to each other because the airbrush should hopefully fill in the gaps. But it's still good practice to get them nice and close. Okay, so you see, just building up. And it's actually got a really nice fluffy uh, look about it. So look in there, that looks good. So just keep persevering with this middle bit. And get 
gets a bit easier once you get out of the middle. So it's feeling a bit already. Now, once we get that bit done, the next awkward bit is actually underneath his muzzle, okay? Um, so you want to go straight from doing the art awkward bit, closing the piping bag underneath. And it's like you're giving him a little sort of uh, goatee beard. It's a bit awkward to so try to do this to the camera, which feels very awkward to do anything to this. So you can see that there and there. Now don't worry so much about the eyes. We just put the eyes in to give an idea of where they're going to be. You can sort of dig them back out later on. Okay, so all the way around the muzzle. And then for the, um, the ears, what I generally do is just pipe forward just so that it's covered in buck cream but not too spiky. And then likewise inside, I can pipe up the way just to sort of cover it. And then of course then you can go on and spike it up. So we're doing all the sort of awkward bits first. Um, and then just go around and do all the easy stuff. I suppose just fill in the, fill in the gaps. It's like I remember we used to do we used to draw, do the colouring ends when you were a kid, do the colouring books. You'd always just sort of do the, the more difficult bits first and just enjoy the, the daydream of this colouring and the rest of it. Okay, so you can see that there, you can still see me marks the eyes, doesn't it? It doesn't matter where you see them. That's fine. Now, I suppose the other thing is the pads. Uh, there, just the, the nozzle. Okay, yeah, so just keep them around. Leave it at the bottom there, just so it's funny at the, the board. Maybe we could put a wee bit just in there. Yeah, that looks good. And then of course you can then start to join up to the other buck in there. And you can see there, we're really starting to get buff-tastic. Put lots of vanilla essence in this, so it uh, smells lovely. So you can see that wee bit there, but you can see the chocolate, but of course it doesn't really matter because the buttercream just takes it all away. Okay, so there we go. So that's that's we've piped all the different areas. And um, so all, all we have to do now is just fill in the gaps. Okay, so I'm gonna get busy off camera, I'm gonna go around and just buttercream the whole thing. Now, just remember if you're colouring the if you're piping in a colour. So if you went for pink, pink beer, just pipe the pink buttercream. Always, always buttercream the whole, always pipe the front, the whole front first, just in case you run out. Because if you work around here and you work your way around here and you start working your way up, and all of a sudden you run out of buttercream for across here, it doesn't look very good. And it happens a few times with the cake shop. Um, so always do the whole front side. And that means if you change the colour of the back, it's the back. It's easier to hide than it is the front. All right, so I'll get busy and I'll see you in about half an hour. Okay, so now we're going to move on to making the hat. Um, so we've got a few things here, but waiver paper here. And one idea I've got is we could fold this over and wet it and scrunch it up and can you make the hat that way? Or we can cut a disc out so it's like, a kind of, like the hat, wet it, and it kind of just flops on. So, so I'm thinking I'm going to try the floppy way first. So, uh, now is that big enough for me to go? Yes, it is. So just fold that over. Okay, and then just... And of course we don't want it to be as flat as that because it looks a bit not very good. 
Um, so what we want to do is, I think I'm going to cut this in half and put on one bit at a time. Now if you get some water, I've got some water in here. Okay. Just get it a little wet and we just want to lay that over there. And then For a, you can see it's not wet at the top there because that's what I was holding. So we're looking for another that kind of vintagey feel to the hat. Just curling it up. Yeah, that's nice. So like that. And that's using it here as a little platform. And then please go stuck to there. There we go. If I get another one and just layer it up just to make it quite a. Uh, yeah, that looks nice. And as it starts to dry, you can just start to curl it around a wee bit. These are quite nice. I thought we could like a big leaf like that as well. Just quite nice. Imagine it sort of up there like that. Um, so what we can do is just draw around these shapes. And make a couple of big leaves. So if we just fold that over. We can cut two at the same time. Okay, so a couple of big ones and a couple of small ones. Cutting out just almost the inside the. I'm just trying to do a slight wibbly wobbly line. Like that. And the same with the big one. I went down these pink, but it doesn't matter. I think this is for the fellows, but. There we go. Three, 
flowers. Trying to get as many out as I can. Okay, and then we just want to cut all the amount as well. So it's going to be a bit boring watching me doing this to camera. So I'll just keep cutting, and then when I come back, there's a lot be cut out, and then we'll move on to the next stage. So we'll be back in a wee jiffy. Okay, so you can see here I've been cutting out some of the leaves. So I've got the four, uh, two large, two small leaves. I've got eight of the larger petal, and I've got about 20 of the small petal. And I've made a few little discs, they're just random sized discs for the flowers to sit on. Okay, now because I want it to get that sort of nice, sort of, um, uh, sort of floaty feel to the leaves, what's the word, sort of vintagey feel, I suppose, um, just get a, a wet brush, not too much water and just dab around um, the petals, like that, okay, not too much water, if you put too much water on you'll see this one looks really curly, um, but that's actually not a bad thing because we want it that sort of look, but you don't want it any more than that, okay, so just pop the water on and you can see just over time that the water just dissolves into the, wets into the paper and it gives it that kind of uh, floaty feel that we're looking for, that nice, um, vintage flowers sort of idea. Okay, so just all we're doing is just picking it up and then just wetting the sides like that. Okay, so if we do this all that with these little ones, oh something's got a bit wet. Okay, so uh, once done that, then we want to do is get a little disc and then a little bit of white sugar paste. scissors. Now if you just pick up the petal and what you want to do is just give it a wee cut like that. And a wee cut. And what we can do here is we can actually just bend these over, uh, cross the, the two cuts over and it just gives it more of a petal effect. Just like, just, so it just sits nicely on the wee sugar disc that we're about to make. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to use all of these for one flower but we'll just May as well just cut them up and see. Okay. Oops. Okay, now a little bit of water and then just cross it over and press down. Okay, I'll do that again. So a little bit of water, cross it over and press. And you see how easy that is to do. It's a very fast, fast process to make these cool flowers. Okay. There we are. Okay. So if you get a wee ball of sugar paste. <coughs> And just place it on top of the, the disc. There was no glue, no water added there. Okay, and just get some water. You can use pipe and, gel, pipe and gel if you want, it makes it a bit stickier. Okay, and then we just pick up the, the flower and we just press it down like that. The, the petal. Okay, and it's really nice. Look at that nice wave, it's got that very papery. Paper roses sort of feel about it. Okay. Around there, like that. And then we can put a little more water in there. And then of course then these little ones that I haven't actually quite finished. So I'm just kind of give them a quick wet. How many will I need? Probably three, four, five. Okay, so we've got water in them as well. And then just want to cut. I just love the way that it just gives that nice, nice look. Okay, and a bit of water. Close it over. Oh my goodness. 
so it's a wee bit cold so it's quite hard to pick things up when your hands are cold. Okay, and then where was these two that I just did there? This thing here. Actually, wet them again once to get them on the cake. Okay, and then just uh, did I put water in there or not? I can't remember. Okay, and then there we go. And we just do this double flower so you get a double center. There we are, so you can see how nice that looks and look beautiful. Okay, now we can just pop that straight onto the cake. So we'll just pop a little bit of water on there. Lift that up and we can just set that on there like that. Look at that. Amazing. Okay, now I was wondering, let me put one, which I'll see. Can we actually just use this to no? I wonder if you just press against there and put a little. Sure, how much that's not bad. That is a little bit. Just try to get a little bit of the, the vein onto it. Yeah, that has actually worked. It just takes the plainness off it. We want to make another uh, two or three little flowers uh, just to go on with that, but just to sort of show you the sort of idea, of course, we can go up and we can put that flower there. So, to stick that on, just get a wee bit of white sugar paste, and we just pop that in the back of the flower, make a little ball, press that on there, a wee water there, and then we can just go on with the petal there. So we just get the, the ball to it. And just pop that on there and look at that and press back. And look at that, it just sits there nicely. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll make the other two or three little flowers and we come back, we can get them added to the cake as well, some more leaves. And then after we've got the hat finished off, we can then put the eyes, the nose, and a little bit of detail, and then we get the airbrush out. Okay, so that's we got the flowers made. Now I just put a wee ball of sugar paste in and just got the wee bone, the ball tool and just put a wee, a wee middle of it and just squished it down. Okay, just, just to fill out. I might do the same with that one as well. Okay, in fact, I'll just do that just now and then you can see what I'm talking about. So a wee ball, paste. And when we come to paint it, that'll just, that'll just blend in. But it just gives that kind of middle. Okay. You can just use the back of your paintbrush. Like that. Okay. Now I want to put on another flower, so I'm putting one just down here, so a little bit of water. Actually, I'm just going to get some sugar paste with the sugar paste and we just want to squidge that on. Oh, it's a good way to do put some sugar paste. Check, see, yep, there we go, that works there. So I'm just going to put water. There we are. There we go. And then we just want to get the rest of these leaves on. So what we can do is just cut these a little bit smaller. I've got 
these little petals I thought we could actually reuse some of them. Yeah, just to um, rather use all the big leaves, we could even use these little tiny ones. So again, just adding some more sugar paste. busyness to it in a sense. Too far back, I can just put a wee bit of sugar paste there. So keep it upright. There we go. Yeah, that looks nice. It kind of gives it a bit more depth to it as well. It's quite nice. And maybe like this one here can just be in the back. So again, a wee bit of ball. paste. So we don't all have to be going sticking up the way. Yeah, there we go. That feels good. Yeah. Put it on there. You see what I'm doing? I'm just trying to fill it out a little bit, and I think that works quite nice. Yeah. Nope, that's it. I'm not going to put any more on there. Happy with that, so that looks nice. Okay, so what we want to do is maybe just get the eyes on. You know, we're going to get a brush, they're going to be black, and they can always paint. So I'm just going to get a little bit of black sugar paste. You want to make little marks for these eyes. Okay, so now we're going to move on to airbrushing the uh, just just little highlights. We're not doing too much airbrushing. So what I've got here is I have the the gun, and I want to put in a little bit of black and a little bit of white. I don't actually know where my my holder is. Wait now, two seconds. See if I can find my wee holder. Oh, there it is. There. Oh, that feels better. Right, so a little bit, uh, I should put the white in first. So, so just a matte white. So we pop that in there. 
kind of get, or I just want to make it a grey colour. So just pop a little bit of this stuff in, a little bit of black. Okay, and then to mix that up, just get your airbrush, hold the needle and pull back. Okay. There we go, I got a nice grey colour there. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, probably not. Nah, that's fine. Okay, so it's grey. <laughs> okay, and then what I want to do is first of all, we're going to go around and highlight the, the teddy first. And then once done that, we'll go that round and do a little bit of work on the, the flowers, etc. Okay, just give myself a bit of space. And the cable over here. Okay. Right, so we just want to go around. I'm just trying to slightly just give it a slight grey tone. Okay. You just keep spinning around. It just looks far too clean, and we're looking for a slight more vintagey feel, aren't we? So, I'll just try to give it a nice. Go a bit down there. Okay, so just spin right around. Okay, so work in there. Bit more in the face. Okay, that's fine. There we go. Okay, so now what I want to do is just go around like the feet area and just slightly darken the wee pads, make them a bit more fluffy looking. There we go. And then in the mouth, I want to go in the mouth and just give the mouth a wee darken down. There we go, that's fine. And then just a wee bit of colour at the sides. Okay, and a little bit in the ear. Just ran out. So just pop, I'm going to pop a little bit more in. Now, I don't want to put too much more in, so I'm just going to put in white and see if there's enough black in there just to. No, let me splash it black again. Okay. There you go. Okay, so there we are. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, now we are just so, yeah, so just a little bit more. Around there. So I'm just highlighting the the arms, so just going around whoops. And then round the bottom as well. Just trying to sort of highlight the bottom. Underneath there, 
All right. Let's have a look. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that grey from there. And now we want to add a bit of colour. Okay. Yeah, right, so. Right, so I think I'll a bit of lilac, lavender. So just pop that in there. See what that colour looks like when it comes out. Oh yeah, that's quite a dark colour, so it'll be very light when I'm putting this on. And I just want to put a little bit of colour into the onto the hat here. Okay, as you can see that's really highlighted the the hat there. That looks good. Yep, that's fine. That looks good. And then what we can do is just put a wee bit of the colour just up the middle of these yeah, these leaves. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Now I'm just getting rid of that colour. Now we're going to move on to pink. Uh, uh, oh, where's my pink gone? Oh, don't seem to have picked up the pink. Oh no, it's peach. I was going to go for that's what it was. Right, so just pop some of that in there. Okay, so just keep adding that pink. I'm starting to warm back to a gal. I must admit, I thought I'd lost her. But she's, she's actually looking... Definitely got a vintagey feel. So I'm just going to just give that board a bit of a warm glow as well. Just keeps it all matching. Oh yeah, that works. Yeah. There we go. Now I've almost ran out, so I'll just keep using this up. Don't mix that noise. There we go. That's the noise. Right. Okay. So, um, so what we want to do now is we want to get some uh, dusts out. So I'm just going to put the tops back on these because it's high risk um, spillage at the moment. So I've got some lovely fake ahill dusts, so I thought we'd use some lovely dusts just to finish to finish it off. So just pop that over there, pop that in the bin, bring my dusts over. Okay, so I've got a lovely pistachio. We have signature gold, we've got a rose quartz, pretty much rose gold, and a gold shimmer. So what I thought would be quite nice is um, for the middle of the flowers, Let's go for quite a deep, deep kind of gold. Well, it's very deep actually. So actually I might do a 50-50 mix with that. Just line up a wee bit, there we go. Okay. Oh, perfect, there we go. So just a little bit of uh, dust in there. That looks nice, so oh, there we go. So that looks nice, just seeing that reflecting off the lights there. And then I thought the pistachio would be quite nice just to, to go on the leaves. Just to add a little bit of a, a wee shimmer. It's really just blending in, but just when the light hits off it, it just gives it a nice... Yep. Looks good. There we go. Yep, that looks good. Oh, I need to do the wee flowers down here. A bit of gold on them. There 
There we go. Oops. Well, you're not going bit of buttercream off, and then they all start falling off. Oh yeah, that looks that looks sweet. That looks good. Okay. Um, now, let's just have a wee look here. So what I was want, thinking about doing was just giving some little highlights of the, the gold on the, the actual fur, just to give her a little bit of a, a yeah. So just watch her not knock the, the buttercream off, we just want to go round I think just to add a bit of metallic loveliness to it. This wasn't part of the plan, but when I saw that grey go on, I thought, oh my goodness. So I started thinking, right, okay, how else can we sort of add, which not have too much on your brush. Okay, just around. Yeah. So look. Yeah, it's quite nice just seeing a bit of a uh, bit of shimmer. Actually, do you know what? I've got a large, I've got a fan brush that is probably a bit more delicate. Let's just see how this this must work. work. Maybe faster. Definitely more more delicate. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay. Put a bit more in there. Oops. Yeah, that works. Okay. Also, this is the back to do as well. So just a, a quick was round the back on the tail. Oh, look, there we gold sparkly tail. Alright, okay. Okay, okay, so that's looking good. You shimmer on the paws. That's fine, that's looking cute. So what I want to do now is the nose and the um a lot, a lot, I think a wee some wee rosy cheeks would be quite nice there. So a quick tidy up and then that's the last bit. Okay, so just on the last touch, so uh, what we want to do is we want to get a nose on. So uh, I've got a piece of black sugar paste here. Just, oh, just check the size. Yep. I want a little ball. And then into a sort of cone shape. Like that. And then we cut off the back. Where's the cone? Yep, so just cut the back off it. That's just so it sits flush with the, the muzzle. Now there's a cocktail stick there, so it should just sit on nicely. You can take that cocktail stick out if you want actually, because it doesn't need to be there anymore. Okay, the wee nose on. Now you can see I have brushed the eyes, um, so we need to just paint the eyes back to black again, be very careful. Gosh I actually like the eyes being like that, because it's a softer feel. Oh, just detail a little bit more. 
It's just a smaller brush. Yep. Actually, that was a, a happy mistake. I actually like the way it's going to give the eyes a kind of cute soft feel rather than be a solid uh, ball. Yeah, like that. Now, what I'm going to do is just so that the colour matches, I know it's black and black, but if you just paint the nose, you just make sure they look the same. Everything else is been painted, so we may as well paint the nose. Okay. Okay, that looks fine. I'm just going to put a wee bit of black inside here. Okay, that's fine. And then to finish off, I'm oh, just going to make that a bit more pointy up there. That's fine. A bit more pointy the other way. There we go. That's good. And then to finish off, some wee rosy cheeks. Because she was feeling a bit flushed for a while there. So just a bit, a bit pink, dusky pink. There. And then just so hardly any at all, it's just enough just to give little rosy cheeks. go. That's better. You can not really see them there. Oh, and then one last thing. One last thing. I keep saying last thing and I do another thing. Uh, there's a wee bit of glaze. There we go. We want to give the, the nose a nice healthy shine. So I'm using, using some confectioner's glaze. Yeah. Let me just pop that on and that will just keep the, the nose shiny. Look at that, that not nice. I think that's it. Yep, so there we go. So one little teddy bear cake. Welcome back, so hopefully you enjoyed watching the tutorial. So just to give you some other ideas uh, what we could do with this. Now obviously I, I picked it in cream and it actually looked really cute in cream. And I must have when I started doing the, the grey I got a bit of a, a bit freaked out so I thought oh my god it looks a bit dirty. But then when I started adding other colours in the gold it looks really nice. But of course you could just pipe it in the grey colour or a pinky colour, uh, whatever you want. So you could do like a very very pale pink and then give it little grey touch-ups uh, which would give it a completely different look as well. Uh, it's quite nice just doing a bit of depth to it, so rather than just pink it, pipe it pink and leave it, it's always good to get a little bit of your brush, or even just, if you've not got an airbrush, just some luster dusts or um, powders and just go around and sort of uh, give it a little, little shadowing and, and dusting, looks quite nice. Um, also we've got the big sort of hat, the big flousy sort of hat up top here, um, so we could take that away uh, and we could put like a little tiara up here, or you could do like a big vintage bow using the waiver paper, or from sugar paste, the big bow at the side there uh, would also look uh, quite nice. Um, now uh, also just the mouth and the muzzle area, um, it was actually great. Came up with this idea. So once you put that muzzle on there, 
you could get the wee scissors and you could actually want, uh, and then go around and just cut it like the, like the Christmas tree effect. So that's actually fluffy as well, but a different texture because it's sugar paste and that's buttercream. So that's actually quite a good uh, idea as well, which is quite nice. Uh, you could do wee glasses, like we just made it of metal and do little glasses like a wee, old, a wee old granny sort of thing. It would look really cute. Uh, on there as well. So, um, and of course, what else would be nice if you've got a pearl pearl mold maker, you could actually make the little pearls as if she's got a little pearl necklace on, and a wee, a wee handbag at the side that looks uh, super cute as well. So, hopefully, that's gave you lots of ideas, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hi, welcome to all the pro members. Um, so, um, so it's been so good fun making this one. The last time I made one of these to camera was the, probably the first cake ever made, way back. Um, and I, I dread to think how that was, uh, how, how that video looked. Um, so it's been really, really nice to, to revisit. That's almost been five years uh, since I made a teddy bear to camera. So it's been really nice doing them. Uh, and the nice thing is, um, is uh, or he, she, sorry, is a bit more pimped up. So airbrushing and the, the waiver paper flowers. So it just shows you how the, the uh, I was going to say how technology knowledge about how skills and um, designs can change over the years so, um, so it's been really good fun making it um, and I, I, when we had the cake shop we used to make these all the time these were the best seller uh, up there with the uh, handbag cakes uh, was the teddy bear cakes because of course you can do anything with it it can be any season at all so we've got Christmas coming up just now uh, you've got Easter you've got Valentine's you've got graduation you've got um, you could do um, occupation style you could do a doctor you could do a nurse you could do Superman. There's just so, there's it's just like limited, limitless to what you can do actually design wise uh, for these cakes, which is why we had so many of them. They're really good. And if someone doesn't know what to get someone for a birthday cake, then it's great for any age. Okay, because all you do is just do a blue board if it's for a boy, happy birthday, and just do uh, like a blue colours. Um, for a girl, you could do a little a wee, a wee pink party hat with a number on it. Easy peasy, really really good to make. So. So and it's cool the fact it's actually made from a ten-inch cake. So it's just hand carved. So it's quite good. <coughs> Excuse me. There's no there's no uh, tins. So of course we can uh, we can really get away with. Um and making it our own style just by tweaking it a little bit. Now originally uh, we, we were a bit running out of time, this is the last cake of the year, yay! And uh, we were going to do two, I was going to do a bride and groom, and I was going to do this sort of groom sort of head about here or here, and cut half his body off sort of thing, and just have one leg coming out and his wee paw coming around, kind of holding on sort of thing, and his wee head sort of here, sort of cuddling in, and his wee top hat and tails, and she was going to have her little, uh, little tiara on. Uh, so, there, so you could do it as a wedding cake for a novelty. A lot of people who have a second time marriage uh, will quite like to have a novelty style wedding cake. Or if somebody wants to be really extravagant, they could have their wedding cake, plus they could have a wee cute teddy bear one that sits in the dessert table or even just the buffet at the wedding, which is quite nice uh, as well. So, uh, so yep, yeah, a good, a good all-rounder. Now, price-wise, uh, I, I, before I even started, I know it's going to be about £35, because all the novelty cakes work out about £35. But let's just see, so £10... Uh, I'm going to say six pounds for the ganache. We use the cheap sugar paste, um, so I'm going to say about um, how much? I'm going to say seven pounds for the sugar paste. That's fine. And then we had the cake board, uh, so two pounds for the cake board. And then with the buttercream, so how much was that? Was it one, two, two? So that was uh, two, four. So about six pounds for that. Uh, anything else? Waiver paper, maybe two pounds for the waiver paper. Uh, a pound for the, yep, so 33, 34, 35, yes, that's what I said, 35 pounds uh, times 3, looks at, uh, no, that doesn't matter, so 35 times 3 equals 105, so 105 pounds would be your basic price for this, so if you're just starting out and you're starting to do cakes, 105 would be your sort of starting price, that's covering your your £35 for ingredients, it's covering your £35 for your time and £35 for your overheads. Okay, so that means you've got to make the cake in three and a half hours. Now when we made the cake shop, uh, our designs were given on it without the flowers on it just and without the airbrushing, just the piped bear with a little message was one hour and 30 minutes to make this cake, okay? But obviously we've done some airbrushing and we've done the flowers so it's going to take a bit longer. So I'd say, I think you could put the best cake in about two and a half to three hours. So, so that's paying yourself £10 an hour, it's 105 But of course, 
Um, I think if this is photographed in a really nice glossy background or a little scene, um, you could definitely get up to £150 uh, easily for this cake if it's, all, if it's been a good photography and it's done well, which means it's a whopping £50 profit, uh, which is what we want to do because it ends you can invest more money into buying more tools or more nice backdrops or nice cameras for your, your, uh, your cake company. Um, so yeah, so really enjoyed making this one. As I say, it's a bread and butter cake. You can have this all year round. And if you really like making teddy bears like I do, make a whole range of them. I always say that. So make a whole range. You get to get to be known as the, the teddy bear maker, uh, which is there's, there's worse things to be uh, to be called. So um, anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed watching the tutorial, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye.